So my dear brothers and sisters, God, God's plan for us is health and healing. It's his will for our lives that we should walk in healing, in health, and walk in authority. And we should lay down everything else that we think, who we think we are, and surrender to his will. When we surrender to his will, to his plan, to his authority, that's when healing flows. That's when we receive our breakthrough. When we don't place our positions or our wealth or whatever we think we are in, on this earth, in society, in community, we put it aside because that does not matter when it comes to God. All that we are and all that we have does not matter when we come to God. That's when we just lay down everything, we put it aside because now we are faced with the King of kings and the Lord of lords and God Almighty, the King of kings. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, the scripture that God took me to was in 2 Kings 5. And you can read it up from verse 1 up to verse, verse 14 even. I will just share a few things um, that I've highlighted here. Um, this is a story about a commander of the army um, of the king of Syria. His name was Naaman. And this guy, he was great and honorable man. He was a great and honorable man in the sight of his master. But there was one thing. He had leprosy. He had leprosy. Although he was great and honorable and he did wonderful things for his earthly master, he was a leper. And then there came a young girl, a young lady, whom um, while they were also um, fighting or they went to Israel and they captured this one young girl. And this young girl, she was serving in the house of the master. And this young girl said, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. If only this girl's faith was in the prophet because she knew what was going on in Israel. That's where she comes from, in Samaria. And she said, if only my master was in Samaria and in the presence of, my, of the prophet in Samaria, he would have been healed. She created that faith in Naaman. She started stirring up something because at first he didn't know anything. He didn't know about a prophet. He, didn't, he thought that this is his life. This is how he will die. But then this child, this little girl, spoke a word of faith in him about someone that can heal him. A prophet in Samaria. Now you can read on from 2 Kings 5 verse 9 and up. But I will also read it with you. If you have your Bibles, you can open it there. 2 Kings 5 verse 9. And we will read up, up until verse 14. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be cleaned. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out. You see how rich people are doing operating. When they are rich, they think everyone should just jump when they speak. Now this guy, because he had the position as commander of the army, and he had money and he was honorable, he thought that the prophet must just do as he wants. But here the prophet tells him, go and wash yourself in the Jordan seven times. So he was furious. He will sh uh, this is what he thought. He will surely come out to me and stand and call to the, on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. And that is also something that we always used to find on, and sometimes find still here. 
Some people just wanting to run to, to, to pastor or running, wanting someone to pray for them. And then they go out and say, ah, this one did not pray for me. And I, this one should have, you understand? That thing, when you come with that attitude already, you miss your blessing. You must trust that it is God working in the person. Doesn't matter who prays for you. Doesn't matter which pastor prays for you or comes in agreement with you. You must trust that it is God, God blessing you through that man of God or woman of God. So he says, it continues and says, Are not, are not Abana, Abana and Fapar, the rivers in Damascus, better than Israel? Could I not wash in them rather? You see, he places his area better than, than the, the part of Israel. Are these rivers and waters not better than the ones in Damascus? That is what he's saying. So he turned away in rage. And his servant came to him and spoke to him and said, Father, my father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? You see, some people's mindsets need to be transformed and changed. If this is what this um, servant is saying to his master, if this prophet had told you, go and build first a house for me, he would have done that because he thought, um, if, if something great will come from there. But now the prophet is just telling him, go and wash yourself. Something as simple as that. Something as simple as that. The prophet is telling him. So the servant is saying, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he says to you, wash and be clean. So something happened in his spirit when the servant said that. And verse 14 says, so he went down, dipped himself in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. My dear brothers and sisters, circumstances, storms comes in our lives, and storms will humble us. Storms have the power to humble people that think they are up there, to bring you down. And I always say, I'd, I'd rather humble myself to God then God to humble me. I'd rather humble myself. Don't think that you are there, your position, your money, your whatever. Because storms come to all of us. And if you are not humble, if you are not in the presence of God, my dear brothers and sisters, the word of God says, your house shall, be, shall, shall fall into a heap of ruin. All of us have things that come into our lives that our power, our position, our money cannot fix. It cannot fix it. Often, it is that very thing that pushes us to our miracle because we start to realize what I have doesn't mean anything. I just need to go to God. Go on my knees and trust God for my healing, for my breakthrough. So you see, faith comes, I mean, healing comes from faith in God. According to the scripture that we read, 2 Kings 5 verse 3, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. This little girl started that miracle in her master's spirit. When she mentioned those words, she started that miracle already started happening when she mentioned the man of God that is there in Samaria. She believed that Elisha will heal her master if he could just be there. All miracles begins with someone's faith, either the faith of the afflicted or faith of someone. So maybe you came here because you have faith or someone else said, just go there. You understand? That miracle already started happening. So you should know. 
it has already started. Your breakthrough is here already. Amen. Your breakthrough, just because you stood up and you heard that voice in yourself or someone else told you to go there because your healing will come. It has already, it's already here. Your miracle. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, we also have that story in Matthew 9 verse, verse 2 where the four friends lowered the man through the roof and in front of Jesus and when he saw their faith, he responded, your sins are forgiven. You see, this is now friends bringing this person that is sick through the roof. Maybe you were brought here by a friend. Maybe you were told by someone, go there. And that's why I believe your miracle is here already. It's inside of you. And the moment one of our pastors come in agreement with that miracle, it is done. You have it tonight. Amen. You will not walk out of this place without receiving your breakthrough and your miracle. Tonight is your night that you receive your breakthrough, your healing, whatever you are trusting God for yourself or for someone else. It is done because you came to the right place. Amen. Naaman's faith was raised to expect, to expect a miracle by the faith of this little girl. God's word brings faith and, and when we start reading God's word, when we spend time in God's word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I challenge you, my dear brothers and sisters, spend time in the word of God. Read the word of God so that your faith can grow. Faith comes from grace. I mean healing. The healing that that Naaman received. It came from grace. He did not have to pay for it. You can read even um, further down from, 13, uh, from 14 where we stopped. Naaman wanted to pay now the prophet. You see how people are. They want to pay now. And Naaman said, no, I will not take your money. I will not take what you bring to me. Verse 5 in that ch uh, chapter. He departed and took it. Took... Um, took with him ten talents of silver and thousand shekels of gold. So he wanted to pay the man of God. But the man of God says, healing is by the grace of God. I cannot receive the money. I cannot receive it. Naaman thought that he can buy his healing. But it doesn't work like that. It comes for free. 1 Peter 1 Peter 2 verse 24, by your stripes, it's by the stripes of Jesus Christ that we are healed. We don't need to pay anything. That's why we, we mustn't go around to, to, you know, people that say to you, you must give so much and then you will receive. You know how, what I'm talking about. When you go to certain places, you must first come and Put something at the altar. No, it's not enough. Come, 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 come. You know how they make a spectacle of, out of it. And only once that basket is full, then the healing apparently flows now. It doesn't work like that. Healing is by the grace of God. Naaman wanted to pay, but the man of God says, no. I can't receive your money. Healing also comes through obedience. But Naaman became very angry and stalked, stalked away. And he said, um, I, I, uh, this man of God, how can, how can he tell me to go and, and wash myself seven times? Huh? But he had to be obedient to the word of the man of God. The man of God instructed him, do this. Go and wash yourself seven times. And he had to be obedient Many of us, we are disobedient in our lifestyles. We do things that we may not do. We go to places where we may not go. While the word of God instructs us, do this and you will be healed. Do that and you will walk in the blessings of God. 
We must walk in obedience. Our healing, our deliverance, our breakthrough is in obedience to the word of God. When he obeyed the word of God and he went and washed himself seven times, that's when he was healed. But he wanted to first just walk away. And then he would have walked away with his leprosy, without no healing, without no breakthrough because of disobedience. But when he obeyed, his healing came. His breakthrough came. My dear brothers and sisters, healing comes from perseverance. So in that same chapter, verse 14. So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. And his flesh was restored like a little baby, little child. Healing comes from perseverance. My dear brothers and sisters. Even if you don't see it now, continue to persevere. Continue to hold on, trusting God. What would have happened if he had just dipped himself maybe six times? He wouldn't have received his breakthrough. He wouldn't have received his healing. He had to obey. He had to persevere to the last part where the prophet, the man of God said, Seven times. You have to dip yourself seven times. Don't wait. Or don't, don't, don't just think that I can, I can take shortcuts in life. There are no shortcuts in life. There are no shortcuts in your breakthrough, in your healing. It costs you a price. Perseverance. To say it doesn't matter how I feel. You remember that story of, of the woman that was afflicted for 18 years. She was bent over. She walked bent over for 18 years. She came to the house of the Lord. She never stopped coming to the house of the Lord until, until she, was, she was touched by the Lord for 18 years. Some of us, we are so in a hurry. We want things and we want it now. While some of us, we messed up our lives for how many years? 20 years of sinful habits. 30 years of sinful habits of disobeying the word of God. Now in one day I go to the church, I want my breakthrough now. Or oh, one week or oh, one year, nothing has happened. I have not received my, my, my men, my husband. I will just go and look for him in the world. Go back to the world. Like the word, like the word of God says, go back like a dog goes back to its vomit. Why are we so in a hurry with the things of the Lord? Yes, sometimes it can happen quick. But sometimes it needs perseverance to show up, to continue being there where you need to be and doing what you need to do. To stop with whatever you know is grieving the Holy Spirit in your life. To be obedient as Naaman was obedient to the voice of the man of God. He was obedient. He did what he needed to do. Healing remains when we are faithful to God. It remains, my dear brothers and sisters. So Naaman said, please, according to um, verse, verse 17, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth. For your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifices to other gods. So after Naaman received his healing, he said he will no longer do anything to, for other gods. He will only do it for the Lord. So Naaman here in the scripture, because he came from, um, from Syria, he came to Samaria where he received his healing. And he thought... Um, it's, it's, it's the ground, it's, 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 it's in Israel that the healing is, the God of Israel. So the healing is only there in Israel. So he said, give me two mules, uh, mule loads of earth. So he wanted sand. He's asking for sand to take along sand to Syria so that he can go and put that sand in Syria and build his altar there. So that he can only worship God there. My dear brothers and sisters. We have 
our Holy Spirit now. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. And you see, what, what stood out for me was, he could have, as he's walking, as he's going back to Syria, he could have taken two bags of sand anywhere in Israel as he was going back to Syria. To, to Syria. He could have done that. But he wanted the man of God to give him the sand. We should desire God to give us the Holy Spirit. It is the same resemblance. We should desire not to get it from anywhere else. We should desire God to give us the Holy Spirit so that wherever we go, wherever we put our foot upon, it is holy ground. It is holy ground. Wherever we touch, the power of God moves. My dear brothers and sisters, we don't need to go and get sand from Israel. We don't need to do that anymore. We have now the best gift that our Lord Jesus Christ gave to us, the Holy Spirit, that is available anywhere, anytime. He's with us. So even right now, He's here with us. And we need to walk in obedience, walk in faithfulness in that relationship with the Holy Spirit so that we can continue to walk in our healing, in our breakthrough, so that we can also declare that I am blessed. Wherever I go, I am blessed. My dear brothers and sisters, in the Lord there is blessings. There is blessings. Stop being one foot in the world and one foot in the Lord. When things are going wrong in your life, running to the Lord. When things are fine, you forget about the Lord. It does not work like that. Naaman, he took the sand that the prophet gave him and he went to build an altar on that sand. We have the word of God on which we build our life. Build your life on the word of God. Because storms will come. Whatever storms, whether it's financial, whether it's sickness, whether it's in relationships, storms will come. But if your house is not built on a firm foundation, which is the word of God, your house shall fall in a big heap of ruin according to the word of God in Matthew. Build your house on the word of God. Let's close our eyes. If there are things in your life that you have done that you know is not in alignment with the word of God where you deliberately disobeyed the word of God ask for forgiveness now Just lay down before the Lord right now. And say to the Lord, Father, I come back to you. In obedience to your word. Just as Naaman wanted to walk away, but then he was called back into obedience. That you come back into obedience to the word of God. God washes you clean right now and he forgives you and he says he even forgets about it. He chooses to forget about it. And then he says, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. 
according to John 5 verse 14. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.